All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Philosophy of Fitness podcast, episode number 19. My name is Haley. I'm going to be your host today and every single day that you are tuning in. Today, I am joined by Callan all the way from South Africa. Welcome. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's crazy. I think about, you know, how the internet can connect people these days. Like you think about even in the 90s, this never would have been possible. It just blows my mind, but I'm so excited to have you on. So no, it's, um, it's very rad. Uh, obviously, like I said to you earlier, I've been seeing what you've been doing over the past couple of weeks and months, and I'm glad we can kind of chat and, and talk fitness and yeah, all of that. Yeah, fitness, mindset, the whole shebang. So you've got a pretty interesting uh, story and background. So I guess kind of in order to give everybody like an understanding of where you started, I know you had a past in baseball, so I'm really curious to hear. I know you were in the States for that a little bit, too. So if you could kind of dive into that a little bit. Yeah, it's been quite a fun journey the past six years. Um, I did I did spend some time in the U.S. playing baseball from – when did I finish high school now? Oh, shucks. 2013. 2014, I started my first season in the U.S., um, and I was based largely out of Fort Myers. In fact, I was actually a new base out of Fort Myers. Our spring training facility – um, for the Minnesota Twins was was in Fort Myers. Um, so I spent a good four, four and a bit years there. Um, that was possibly one of the greatest um, experiences of my life. Um, I wouldn't say to date because there's been some pretty rad things that have followed that. Um, but the actual journey itself, like it was a lot of learning. Um, I think that's the biggest thing when you're a kid coming out of high school as an 18 year old kid and you kind of just thrust into another cu- country to go and do your thing. It's a uh, it's quite intimidating. Um, it was for the first couple of months to the year at least. But um, yeah, so I was a professional baseball player from 2014 until March, spring of 2018. Um, and then I got released from my contract, uh, which was which was not the worst thing ever. Um, I know it always seems like the worst thing ever to kind of have something like that taken away from you, especially when once upon a time it was like this big dream to... I want to play Major League Baseball. Um, <laughs> um, I think by the time we got to 2018, uh, I was very much so ready to take the next step in my life. Um, and my life has kind of evolved from there quite a bit. I didn't really expect to um, to be where I am today, actually. Uh, I had really no guidance. I didn't know what I was going to do when I got back from the U.S. It was it all happened super fast. In that, in that kind of profession, it, it happened super fast. Like, one day you can be pitching and having a fantastic day. The next day you just like, here's your plane ticket. You have to go home. And it's as cutthroat as that. It's wow. kind of, it's kind of intense. So you never, you never really know. Um, there's always a lot of uncertainty, but um, as things have kind of evolved, um, I, I've actually, I was very, very grateful for that journey because it actually got me to a position where I am now, where I'm actually thoroughly enjoying um, just life in general uh, work. Um, yeah, so outside of baseball, after baseball, I came back to South Africa um, about a week later. Didn't really know what to do. And I figured, you know what, like for four years, I, I was very much um, a lover of fitness, becoming the best possible athlete that I could be within that kind of domain, the baseball um, domains. But um, yeah, and then I was like, well, I don't really have a job. Like, I also just left my family in Durban and I came all the way over to Cape Town. I just loved Cape Town, mm-hmm. so I didn't have a job. I'm like, well, you know what the next step, I guess, let me try and see if I can turn that, that fitness, that enthusiasm for fitness into something constructive. Um, and I figured that I, I hung around with a large group of CrossFit folk um, that were very, they were big lovers of CrossFit. The guy that I actually lived with when I came back to Cape Town owned a CrossFit facility, um, which I trained out of even during my, my professional playing days. Um, and I thought it was just a natural step to be able to get in there and 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 take that level one course, the CrossFit level one course, just trying to educate myself on um, how, how to move better as an athlete, one, and possibly use it as a platform to then just make a little bit of extra money whilst I was still trying to find my feet um, in the world. Um, and needless to say, that kind of did. I, I think even when in times like that, just being proactive, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the most groundbreaking, biggest um kind of experience that you need to to find instantaneously but um, I definitely thought that was the next step that I needed to do 
which then naturally led on to the job which I have now, which I'm quite stoked to be a part of, and that's um, being a tech rep for Reebok within the Cape Town area. Um, so yeah, as times kind of evolved, things have unraveled nicely, and um, if, if anyone really wants to know what a tech rep is, we go into mm, all of yeah. the sporting stores. Yeah, so all the sporting stores around the South African region, um, well, m more so for me in Cape Town, um, if they have Reebok product in it, I'll go into those stores and train uh, the staff within those stores on what the product is made out of, um, what the technical performance aspects to the shoes or the, the clothing is, um, so that they're able to kind of relay that to the consumers in, in a much easier way. So it's super fun. Like I get to engage with a lot of people. Um, I get to talk a lot, which I, I think I've really expressed to you that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we might end up doing. Um, but it's quite fun. Like it, it, that was a big growing experience for me. I, I, I got to um, just learn how to speak in front of people. And I guess that's a big thing. Like you want to be able to hold a conversation with people that are older and younger with you and relate to them. Um, and, and that's kind of how, that's kind of what my job has led to me, led me to in a large way. Um, I know I'm, I'm kind of rambling off here, but um, once I got that Reebok position and kind of life evolved a little bit more, um, I noticed that within our, within our kind of immediate South Africa region, um, there was a, 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 a space for us to try and potentially grow Reebok running here in South Africa. Um, and I was like, well, you know what? I, I gained a lot of inspiration off of some, some running communities in the US actually. Um, and I was like, well, I actually want to start up something like that here in Cape Town. It's a little bit different. You know, give, give runners, like running is tough enough to start as it is, you know, and, and like a lot of people, like it's daunting for people to go and run five kilometers. Yeah. And I was like, well, how do I make that fun? Like, I used to hate running when I was young. I used to be oh, me so too. bad at it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I can't even, like, I can't even, like, emphasize how bad I was at running. And it was only during my baseball days that I really take a lot more pride in how I moved, just my body movement and into my running. Um, so I wanted to try and make running fun for people. Um, so I started up this crew, uh, this crew runners community. There you go. Yeah, the t-shirt says it all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's right there. Um, and I started up that community and it's quite fun. Like we, we engage quite a bit with, uh, with our community. Um, and like I said, just trying to try and make running fun again. Uh, and we don't try and go for the biggest runs. Uh, we keep them nice and small. We run with speakers so people have music. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's kind of a nice vibe. Like we, we run with the music um, and we run in different packs. So like you might not be the greatest runner around, but there's a pack for you within our community where you can run with one of our team leads um, and you run with your own pace. You know, so it's quite cool. Um, we do a little hip class in the middle of the run. So it's like, oh, wow. yeah, we always kind of strategically plan it so that it's like in the most beautiful part of Cape Town. Like it's, it changes every month, but that's so we'll have cool. It, but yeah. And we just have this little hip class and, and people can, can do their thing whilst like seeing nice scenery and then we'll finish off like the loop of the run. Um, and then yeah, people will kind of yeah. cash out from and running um, just, with a group just, too, like that's such a game changer. Cause I know for me, like you just said, I was the slowest kid in gym class growing up, the last <laughs> one to finish everything. But having that yeah. sense of um, accountability of people around you makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's like, like I said, like it's running's quite daunting for people who it can be boring. Like just when you start off running it, it can be quite boring. Um, the more you do it, the more fun it gets and the more like the less distracted you get, so to say. Um, yeah, so it's just like, it's taking those, those people that don't ever run and being like, Hey, come on through. Um, you can run at your speed. You can run how you like, you're not going to be judged for how you run. You just need to be you. And it's like, come fit into our community and there's a place for you. Um, and, and that's what, that's kind of what I wanted to, to get out of that is that, um, you just, you just want to create an environment where everyone feels like they fit in and are welcome. Uh, that's. And that's pretty much what it did. And it's grown nicely. It's been quite fun. But yeah, the past six years has been loads of fun from baseball to yeah. crossfit to running. Um, what a wild been, journey. Like, wow. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and you know, like I do miss the US. Um, the US is a beautiful country. Uh, I spent, like I said, I spent a lot of time in Fort Myers. But Fort Myers and, is amazing, yeah. Yeah, like Fort Myers, the beaches down there are red. And yep. Love the food and it was it was really cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. So how different would you say uh, the U.S. was compared to South Africa, just in general? I'm always so curious because Cape Town is so high on my bucket list of places to visit. Yeah. Uh, but I am curious, like, how different is the, the vibe there versus here? No, it, it's it's quite interesting. I, I think the U.S. in general, it's just a massive country here. And, so that, and obviously, different parts of the country, um, you get people that are that they're different people. Um, so maybe a person in Boston might be very different to a person that's in California, just in terms of how they dress, how they speak, um, their mannerisms to an extent. Um, it's the same here in South Africa. Like we have regions, we have Johannesburg, where people are, it's a very fast moving city. Um, people work there. Cape Town's very relaxed. Like people that chill out here, they'll go for their mm. surf. Um, so yeah, like just in general, in terms of the US and South Africa, it's very different. It really is different. Um, South Africa has its own unique, like unique beauty um, about it. And you kind of have to come and experience what the country offers. Um, I, I, you obviously, in the media, it might be in a way, but just in general, like the country is beautiful. And, and Cape Town itself is, is quite a beautiful city to come in and experience different cultures, um, different types of scenery. Um, the, the oceans are cold on one side, it's warm on, warmer on the other side. Oh, and, wow. Um, yeah, like it, it's, it's fun to see how diverse uh, the different cultures are here in Cape Town. And that's what really made me fall in love with the country or with the city in general is, is the fact that it's super diverse and it kind of gives me a, a feel of um, a little bit of Europe, a little bit of uh, the US, a little bit of South Africa, and then like kind of all thrown together. Um, to make cool. one big city. Yeah. Sounds like a nice um, little uh, melting pot of everything. Yeah, no, yeah, I would highly recommend it. It's it's it is a really cool place to come and visit. Yeah, once it's uh, you know safe to travel again, hopefully. But for now, things are kind yeah. of. Uh, how are things with COVID in South Africa right now? Yeah, it's 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 been quite a journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what like you heard uh, uh, in the US. Um, we're still in a lockdown. Yeah. Uh, we've been in the lockdown since March 25th, I think around there. The first part of the lockdown was intense. Like, so we've gone through levels. It's been level five being the most severe, uh, all the way down to level one where kind of uh, the economy and, and the country's almost just somewhat back to its new normal, so to speak. Um, but it's been quite intense. Like business has struggled here, which has made it tough, especially for those small boutique, like local uh, companies and, and it's been tough to see you know like we as a country I think rely largely on tourism as well um, and with that being cut it's, it's, it's been difficult um, I think I think from your side also like gyms have been closed so yeah I was gonna ask that too yeah to, like, not many people have been able to go and, and, and do that traditional fitness you know like they, not, they weren't able to go to the gym and they had to kind of improvise and, and, and do the, their home workouts and some facilities have been really great, like really, really great in, in offering that, um, which was great. And, and, and I feel very fortunate that I was a part of a facility that um, had really great coaches uh, and a really great structure in place to give me a program throughout the entire lockdown period. Oh, wow. um, whether that just be in, in our living room on the floor, like doing burpees and all those yeah. things, um, or downstairs in the garage, like they, they are, and they offered a program that kind of catered with it. So that was great. Um, yeah, but I'd say like things are starting to ease up a little bit more now. We're on level two eventually as of like last week. Okay. Um, so yeah, things are looking on the up, if I can say, but it has been yeah. quite tough. So I think we've been on one of the longest lo lockdowns out of just about every country in the world. Um, yeah, and that's long. It, it's been long. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think about it since March till now, what are we... We're almost at midway through, almost at the end of August. August like yeah. that, that's a lengthy period to be um, in lockdown. And when I say lockdown, there was times where we, we weren't allowed to really get out the house unless we went to the shops. Like we had to stay indoors. And yeah. so it was quite intense. Yeah. And I'm not sure what it was like on that side, but. It's pretty similar. Uh, I'm in New York, so we're one of the more strict states uh, with lockdown yeah. stuff. But there was a time too when. Uh, you know, people weren't allowed out unless they had to go to the store. And even now there's very strict protocol in terms of if you go somewhere, if you were to go to a bar, for example, you had to order food to go to the bar. 
Uh, that's like a recent thing. I don't even know what's going on. There's so many things and it changes every single day. It's you, it's so hard to even keep up with it. But uh, we're on the upward tick too uh, in terms of, you know, loosening things up. So hopefully uh, everything, you know, will keep continuing on that trend. But gyms are supposed to be opening in person soon. But I think everyone's going to have to wear a mask. So that's going to be really interesting to kind of see how that pans out. Oh, that's that's love for us. Yeah, we have to wear the yeah, mask. Yeah, mask no. everywhere. It's quite interesting. Like you walk into the gym, sanitize your hands, and then yep. you, have to put them on. you go and stand in your block, and then it's <laughs> quite interesting how how the world has changed. Um, yeah, hopefully we can come out of it soon and, and be better. I guess that's the best thing. Yeah, it's um, definitely been uh, a crazy year, just across the board of change and stuff that's probably going to be staying. Uh, the way that it is now uh, for a little while. But uh, was Crew Runners able to meet during all this since you guys were outside? Oh, uh, it has been tough. So, like, we, we had our, our last run was on in February. So, we actually started off our first, like, proper Crew Runners run was on, uh, like, the 25th of Jan. Um, oh, okay. We kind of started up for the first time. And then we had February, which was quite cool. And then we went smack bang into the middle of lockdown by the end of by the end of March. So we didn't really get a chance to run for the past five months together collectively as, as a community, if I can say. It. Um, but, but this, I guess in anything like this, this period of lockdown and, and the, and the COVID-19 um, pandemic has been quite interesting because it's, it's made people really try and think of ways to find solutions um, and, and just try and improvise a little bit to try and still make that accessible to their communities um, in some sort of way. So like I said, like my, my, my gym that I go to, Marty Pre CrossFit, um, one of the best in the country, um, really put their best foot forward in terms of creating um, a program for their members. Um, we try to improvise and just try and create ways to maybe um, help out the community in some sort of way. So we did a run for aid, a run for aid meaning for animals in distress. We did that quite often two months back um, and that was just to try and raise funds for these animals in distress, which was super cool and super rad because we got a lot of um, support through that. Like it's a, it's a testing time. Like people don't necessarily have money because business is tough, but um, our community really came together, uh, which was super nice to see. And, and we raised a fair amount of money for these animals in distress. That's awesome. So we got, we did a run then um, and it wasn't together. Like I said, it was like, Hey guys, we're doing this virtual run. You just need to pick a five or 10 kilometer route of your choice. Um, go out and do the run, do your tag, tag us on socials, all that kind of jazz. Um, and then it was almost like a race five. You could win some prizes. Like Reebok South Africa was super great there. They came on board and with prizes and stuff. So it just made it a whole lot more wholesome and fun and it made people want to be um, included in that even more. Um, and then this month now on the 29th, we actually have a nice woman's month run that we've got oh, lined up. So like our whole, our whole campaign for this month has been driven towards the women of our community, the women of, of the entire world in general, just to celebrate them um, because they, they need to be celebrated. Um, so it's been quite fun to see how that has evolved over the month and we're going to run on the 29th. So it's not together once again, but it's, you know, at That's least so it's in cool. celebration and like we'll see that. Yeah, we can all kind of live, live it through each other's eyes, like on social media, we'll like re-tag and repost and like people can see like where this person ran and like how they did this and took cool photos. And yeah, mm -hmm. so we haven't been able to run much together, but finding ways to try to at least keep people running. I think it's be been um, an interesting time of being able to still bring people together because I do feel like in some ways, people are closer now than they were uh, before the lockdown because there's virtual runs have been huge, I think, across the globe, you know, in so many different communities. And it's awesome. And you have that sense of accountability and that sense of camaraderie, even though you're not necessarily running next to the person, but you still have that sense of community. So it's kind of yeah. like you said, just um, adapting and overcoming and finding different ways to, to bring people together uh, is yeah. huge. No, for sure. Like, and, and you know what? Like, there shouldn't always be this massive purpose for people to have to get out and be like, okay, I'll run because of that. Like, the idea is you want people to run because you want to en encourage people to just be fitter and healthier versions of themselves. Um, but like I said, like during this time, it's been quite challenging in general. Um, 
and, and and where we can run we can also support others and that's kind of the bigger thing you know we support others and we go run for it and it just makes it, it kind of makes it a little bit more worthwhile for people that may have struggled during the lockdown period to get out and about and do the fitness or were a little bit like nervous to do so because they went sure and um it just kind of maybe gives them that little bit of push to to be like hey you know what great cause let's go and get out and run so yeah no it's challenging times but you know you we overcome them and it's it's always fun to see how people come together yeah. and make it happen Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see how creative people can get with, with overcoming that. And you were saying something earlier too, about how crew runners is really focused on accepting everyone and bringing everyone together in a place where they feel, you know, comfortable and accepted. And I think that's huge too, with running. I know for me, when I first started, and I think for a lot of people, uh, you get scared and you kind of hold yourself back because you're intimidated of thinking, you know, you're not fast enough or you, you can't keep up with anyone else. And you get very in your own head to the point where you can sometimes hold yourself back from even giving it a try. So to know that you're in a space where you're, you know, you're not being judged, uh, is, is really important. So I love no, that. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's always a weird one because when I was in high school, like I said, I wasn't a great runner at all. And, and you would see these other guys, we'd have like track and field days where we, we get out and run. I adopted this, the worst running approach, like the worst running technique I think anyone could ever like, ask to, <laughs> to take on. So like I embraced this like terrible running technique and I was like, oh, I don't know why I did it, but I did. And I felt really like, I felt really like uncomfortable running, like especially in front of people. And you know, like you should never feel uncomfortable running around people just because that person looks like he's running really well and can run and like that shouldn't stop you from running. Um, you know, like you just need to find your community. Um, otherwise also like it's different people, like they, we all run differently and, and you can't really judge a person on how they run. You shouldn't judge a person on how they run. Like, um, we are all different. And if we all worked out of the same textbook, then it would be boring. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So like, it's not really ideal to even, I, I think that's where like from the crew runner side, it's like, Hey, come, come run with us. We all different folk. We all run weirdly in our own way. We're not the perfect textbook runner and we don't ever plan to be the perfect textbook runner. But you can come have fun with us and we can have a, like a lot of energy um, and, we, and I promise you we will make you smile. Like that's the thing, especially before the run, like I will always brief the community. Um, like we'll stand and chat and I'll just be like, hey, this is what's going on. And like, that's a big icebreaker moment. It's like, hey guys, you know what? Relax, we have to do what's natural to us. We can run. Um, just go and run, like have fun. Here's some music. You can listen to your latest Taylor Swift song if you want to. <laughs> like, there's a speaker, go run. Um, and you know what? I think at that point, like people forget about how they're running and it's more like, well, this is great energy. Um, it's cool to be a part of it. And that's what you want. You want to create that community where everyone feels like they're welcome and that they fit in um, constantly. Um, so, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's a great yeah. approach. And it kind of... I was thinking about something when I was on my run the other day of how sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves to be at a certain time or I've got to maintain this pace. I got to do this, that, whatever. Just like show up. I had a teacher tell me that once. And that's a piece of advice that stuck with me is just show up and see what happens. Like just yeah. show up, take the pressure off yourself, just kind of be in the moment, tap into it. And some, sometimes that's when the, that's when the best runs happen, at least for me is when I kind of step away from feeling like I have to be at a certain time or a distance and just, you know, yeah. get into the no, moment. For sure. Like I, I, in, I can kind of pull in my baseball side of it, you know, um, for the four years that, um, when I was, when I was playing, I put so much pressure on myself to be the best athlete. Um, I, I went in like, I would do, I'll train three times a day in my off season. Wow. Uh, I put so much like pressure on myself to make sure that when I was on the field, like I was miles above everybody. And you know, like it got to a point where I was so worried about like whether everyone else saw me and um, the way I wanted them to see me. Um, I got to a point where like I would step on the baseball field and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this today. Um, like this is, uh, this is not fun. And what I'm trying to say is, is that like I, I did, I put so much pressure on myself to try and be this, this great athlete, or whatever it is that I just didn't enjoy it anymore. Um, and then, you know, when I kind of stepped back a bit outside of baseball, 
and I was like, hey, you know what, like, just go and run, have a good time, like, enjoy it. Um, go into the gym, don't try and kill yourself, but have a great time just training in the moment. Um, I ended up being a lot better athlete than what I ever kind of was. And, you know, it's just that pressure element of it. Like, we don't need to put that pressure on ourselves. Um, it should be fun. It should always be fun. And, you know, like, even on the baseball side, once upon a time when I was a child, it was so much fun. I loved it. Um, it then didn't become fun. Um, and then now, like, I don't play baseball anymore because it's just the passion's gone. I, I, I killed that myself. Like, that was my own doing. Um, so, like, and you take it into it. Like, just, you always kind of want to make sure that you're doing it for the fun of it. Um, you will end up being a better athlete when you do it for fun. And, um, yeah, you'll come out of that stronger, fitter, healthier in whatever means. But put too much pressure on it. It can, it can actually send you in the opposite direction. Yeah, honest. it's so true. And I know a lot of people, at least in my fitness community, that are all about, you know, pressure is a privilege, you know, this and that, whatever. But I kind of, I agree with you. I kind of stand on the opposite side of that. And also when we get so caught up in how other people view us, feeling like we kind of have to fit this mold or this expectation, that's when the passion really dwindles away is when you stop doing it for yourself and you start doing it for someone else. So, I feel yeah, it, no, it, it's, it's always an interesting one. You know, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, when I start a workout um, and the class is about to get going, like there's adrenaline and like, I want to compete. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like I always have that competitive nature inside of me. Like it's just how I've been my entire life. Um, but it's it's more of a healthy competitive nature now. Like it's fun. It's like, hey, you know what? Like I'm glad I've got other people in the class with me right now to do this workout with me. Um, I'm glad I've got someone across the room who's going to push me to be a little bit better. But I'm going to use that in a fun way um, to make myself better as well. Um, and it's not like I have to beat that guy. Like it, it, it doesn't yeah. ever need to be that. Like we want to be happy. Fitness is actually just, it should be a fun thing. Like, um, it's, it's such a healthy thing that we need to make sure that it's constantly fun. Um, and I guess that's where the shift has come from our baseball days towards now. It's like, I want fitness to be fun. How can I make fitness fun for other people? And, and that's where the kind of crew runners aspect of it pulls in. It's like, I want to make it fun for other people to run. Now. That's, that's just the way it, it should be. It should be fun. Yeah, I like, I like that approach of thinking of fitness as, you know, something that should be enjoyable for everyone. And someone always, there was someone in my life, I don't know if it was a teacher or a coach, but they always say, you know, exercise shouldn't be like a punishment. It should be a celebration of what you can do with your body. And I think there's such a yeah. switch that happens internally when you change your perspective of a workout and you kind of think of it as like honoring your body and having fun with it rather yeah. than, you know, having to beat yourself up for eating an extra slice of pizza or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a, uh... It's quite an interesting one. Um, you know, I, even from that period when I was playing up until now, like I, I spoke about, you know, trying to be the best athlete that I could possibly be, like, and then it, it to, to my detriment, um, kind of affected me, you know. Um, but but in saying that, like for me, it's it's super important to move well, um, even when I train at the gym. Like, I, actually, I was thinking about it today. I love deadlifting. When I work out, I absolutely love deadlifting. And today, one of the coaches in the gym, I mean, I mean I've deadlifted for years now. And, and he made such a small adjustment today with my legs that, like, I'd never heard before. Um, and and I, I started deadlifting and I was like, wow, this is actually great. And you know what? It was like, here I am six years into really taking my fitness kind of seriously. When I say seriously, as in, like, being a lot more... Um, doing fitness a lot more than what I ever did with in my high school days. Um, and here I am still learning, you know, and, and that made it fun, man. It was so fun to like actually deadlift today with those new and improved techniques uh, and see how that kind of benefited me. Um, and that's the thing about fitness. Like it can be so much fun to learn how to move well. Uh, and, and that's a big thing for me. That's a big thing for our gym just in general. It's like, you're not yet to say, Hey, go lift 500 pounds. It's like, Hey, go and move that bar really well and efficiently um, and you will eventually move 500 pounds efficiently well you know like um, 
and it's fun like it's fun to see how you evolve over the years and 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 that's what it should be like it shouldn't be a matter of like trying to to reach the end goal within your fitness domains like today um you will always have to learn um but it should be a fun journey you know like you should every single thing that you learn whether it's be snatching whether it be power cleaning all that kind of different stuff um, it's so much fun just to learn how to move even if it's just with the bar even if, it, if it's with a pvc bar um when you start making it too intense when you start maybe trying to say well i want to lift 500 pounds before you can move on and then you, you can't lift that 500 pounds and then you're like oh my gosh i'm so frustrated yeah. like why well, can't i do this and then it just doesn't become fun um i think that's when it gets a little bit like away from you as a, as a fitness enthusiast um but yeah like i i kind of am, am very big on just moving well as a human being um and I, and, I, and I trust that like the weight element of that will fall into place and um, it just makes the whole process really fun um, and yeah i'm not sure what your take is on that and um, what you think no i actually i love that approach of um kind of thinking of it as really honing in your form uh, before you progress any further and also kind of expanding on that a little bit of always being, uh, receptive to new information. Cause I feel like, especially in the fitness industry, you're, it's, it's an ongoing learning forever and ever. You're always learning. You're never at, I know everything about fitness and lifting and I know how to perfectly do this. Like you said, just the smallest little adjustment that you can make. Um, and just being open to, to information like that and to adapting to it and incorporating it and, making sure that you're really understanding the fundamentals of movement before you try to, cause you can't just jump from like point A to point B. There's no, exactly. you know, a progression that you have to follow. So no, for sure. And you know what, like, I think within the fitness doors, like there can be a lot of egos involved, which is, it's quite an interesting one because I think a lot of gyms, even just like their house rules, general house rules, like leave your ego at the door. Uh, and that's the thing, like people will come into the gym and they will see like the guy next to them lifting the heavy weight and they'll be like, well, I need to lift that. And, you know, um, and then you wonder why after four months, like you don't want a gym anymore. Like it's not fun and it's an, it's an unhealthy obsession um, as opposed to a healthy one, you know. Um, and you want to move well, like, like you need to trust the process. And when I was playing baseball, the, the first day I stepped into Fort Myers, I already wanted to be in the big leagues. It was like... I was like, I really want to be there before I even done the work to get there. And it's like the same thing in the gym. Like you have to learn how to move well. Um, you really have to learn how to move well and trust that that's going to then allow you to lift heavier, you know? Um, because ultimately in the day, like you can lift 500 kgs or 500 pounds and you can lift it really terribly. Um, when you're 70 years old, like you want to be able to get out of bed with good posture and, and that's the thing like if you learn to move well from a young age um and really be conscious of how you're moving um that's going to help you when you're older that's what you want it's the longevity behind it you don't want to be 70 yeah. years old struggling to get out of bed um and that's like one of the biggest things that's played on my mind i'm lucky enough that i'm that I train in a facility that has really great coaches that have taught me this over the years um and i adapted it throughout my baseball career into where i am now um, you want to move well. Moving well is very important. It makes it fun to learn how to move well and what you can do with your body. Like, like I said, when you when you just go in and want to lift 500 pounds before you're ready to lift 500 pounds and then you can't do it, it can be demotivating. Um, and, 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 I, and I can understand that. But if you trust the process, do the work that you need to learn how to move well, you'll be able to lift 500 pounds for a longer period of time. <laughs> I can assure you that. And that's kind of a testament to what to just kind of healthy moving um, is all about, I guess. And that, that's yeah, trust the process. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's my take on like kind of the whole fitness side of it and, and creating an environment that is fun and, and healthy. It's a healthy fun, you know, um, and, and trying to make sure that the next day I want to go into the gym actually want to do fitness or well, i want to be a part of it because i can be a part of it um and it's not like i'm like oh well that's going to make me frustrated because i didn't do it yesterday so now i'm like so yeah that's pretty much uh that how it goes around that. in in terms of my head what what, what swims around my head yeah. <laughs> no i love it i i love where your head's at that's huge and i think 
a part of it too is kind of creating a space where you don't feel like you have to be comparing yourself to other people. So like you said, if you're at the gym and the guy next to you is lifting super heavy, then you're in your mind like, oh, I got to do that too. It's like everybody is different. So, you know, we could do the exact same workout and have completely different results, follow the same meal plan, whatever it might be. Like just follow your own course and just focus on not comparing yourself to anyone else. Just Honestly, if you compare yourself to anyone, compare yourself to who you were the day before. That's the yeah. only person I say you should ever, you know, compare think, yourself to. Uh, it's always fun to see that. I think especially as a coach, like it's, 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 it's fun to see how, um, say, athletes within your class evolve over time. Like they don't ever see how much they've evolved, but we see how much they've evolved. And that's where it's fun for us. Um, but it's also like a management thing because you have to manage them and be like, hey, listen, like, yeah, I get it. You're not doing the bar muscle up yet, but six months ago you weren't even doing pull up. Um, and they're just like, oh, I can't, I can't get the bar muscle up. Like it's so frustrating. I'm just like, well, look how far you've come in six months. Like you've gone from doing no pull ups to a pull up to now wanting to do a muscle up. Um, keep the fun in it. Like keep trusting the process. Like you'll eventually get that. Um, but you don't need to be at the end product like right now. You know, otherwise it's going to get boring. And yeah. Easy, like, that's the process because then you're going to get that muscle up and it's going to be like, well, now I want to be 10 and then you're going to get faster and it's just never going to be good enough. It's never going to be good enough. And then you're never going to be happy. Um, and then it's never going to be fun. So it's like, yeah, it's always fun to see from a coach's perspective. Like, and then, and then you kind of interpret that yourself because you end up making the same faults and you're like, well, how can I teach it if I'm not really implementing that myself? And then you kind of put yourself back and you're like, okay, well, I need to actually also, I've learned from what I'm teaching, you know, what I'm preaching in a sense. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's always fun, but um, I must admit, like I, I enjoy the CrossFit space. I know, I know we kind of chatted briefly um, and you had mentioned like a little bit about me talking about the CrossFit side of it. Um, yeah. And like, I, I think one of your questions to me was like, are there any tips for like someone who's the first time we're looking to start CrossFit or something along those lines? Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's quite an interesting one because like I've I've actually seen people come into the gym and it can be quite daunting. Um, when you, when you see like another person doing, for example, you pull up and you can't do it. Um, but as you we kind of go back to what you're saying just now, it's like run your own race. You know, it's very important to run your own race in whatever you do. Um, you trust that you will eventually get there uh, to where you want to be, whatever your end result is it doesn't have to be what the person is next to you what, whatever their end result is and it has to be whatever your end result you want it to be you know uh, and work towards that um, you know and make it fun uh, i think there's a big misconception about crossfit that you know you have to lift these heavy weights and it can be messy and all that kind of stuff but i think what i want to do is tie this back to the whole element of like crossfit really does allow you to to kind of pull a lot of different types of functional women together, like the gymnastics aspect of it, the weightlifting aspect of it, the cardiovascular aspect of it, um, and just to become more all-round athlete in a sense. Um, like I always find that that's super, super fun. When I was a child, I didn't ever, in my wildest dreams, like think that I would ever do gymnastics. And in my mind, when someone mentioned me, hey, do you want to do gymnastics? I was like, no, I want to go to the baseball field and throw a ball. <laughs> Like it was never something in my mind, um, but it's fun to see how like trying to take on different sports just in general, um, trying to make sure that like you, you kind of buy into the idea that um, they're going to make you a better moving athlete um, if you kind of just trust the process and, and try and move well. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that I love most about the CrossFit side of things and I've just become a better all round athlete. Um, and I guess, yeah, like people that are wanting to start it out, it's like, leave the ego at the door. Um, I'm in there with yeah. a fresh mindset. You don't have to be this bold, chunky, crossfit, stereotypical person that you might see on TV. Like you, you run your own race and you can get the results that you want to do. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you're going in to get a fitter and healthier version of yourself. Um, and, and that mindset should never disappear. It should never be about like, it should never just be about CrossFit. It should be about you becoming a better, healthier human being. Um, and that's where it's important when you step into a CrossFit and to remember something like that. 
day to day better. Not today. Yeah. yeah. I think that's such a good point of carrying that mindset with you beyond the gym, because that's something you could apply to every single area of your life, career, uh, family relationships, like just run your own race, focus on yourself. Don't get caught up in, uh, comparing yourself to other people. I think that that's so huge. And it's definitely something that's easier said than done. And it oh. takes time, <laughs> uh, to work towards, um, but kind of shifting gears. Cause I always ask people this and I'm really curious to kind of see what your take is and I can kind of get a gist of it from what you're uh, sharing with me already. But what, what is your take on the mind body connection, how your mindset can kind of correlate to what we experience? Yeah. So I think like when I chat a little bit like earlier about, uh, when you, when you start making something a little bit too serious, um, it can affect how you perform. Um, and I guess if this is kind of really, if this is what you're asking, but it's like, yeah, for me, I, I have experienced that where it became so serious that my performance became a problem. Um, and you know, you, I think from a mindset side of it, it's like, yes, you've done the work to get there. You need to be confident in the fact that you've done the work to get there. Um, but don't ever make it more serious than what it needs to be. Um, because ultimately at the end of the day, um, for me, for example, I got the opportunity to go to the division baseball, which means that it was in some way, someone recognized that I was good enough to be there. Um, you know, when I made it so serious, because I was like, I need to prove that I need to be here and I need to be the best thing that, that, that is actually in this organization right now. Um, and it made me a worse baseball player. Like it really did. Like all I worried about for four years was whether I'd have a job the next day, I was paranoid about that. Um, and, and I think when we tying something like everything that I did was like, it was all in my head. It was everything that I kind of painted it out to be, and, and it actually wasn't the case. Like, they believed in me, I just didn't believe in me. And it's very important that I think, um, trust that you've done the work, um, that you've worked hard to be where you are. Don't make it any more serious than what it needs to be. Um, and the performance took care of itself. Otherwise, once it gets too serious and ugly, then you know, how you, how you perform, how your body responds to that, and how you recover uh, will also be kind of impacted by that. So that's really my take on the kind of mind-body connection. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just in general. Yeah, I think that's such a, a an important perspective to kind of understand that we can not ruin things for ourselves, but we can really hold ourselves back and take the enjoyment out of things when we put so much pressure on ourselves. And I'm someone who, in my life, I've always been putting so much pressure on myself, and no one else is, you know, doing that. Uh, it's all in my head. And it's taken me a while to kind of, you know, step away from that and work through it. But uh, yeah, once you realize that where it's like, you know what, just show up for yourself, you you do the work, you do the best that you can and, you know, have a little bit of confidence in yourself too. Yeah. It's not to say to go blasting around saying, oh, I'm so much better than everyone else. Like, just tell yourself, you know, I'm working towards being the best version of myself every day. Yeah. And, and then that will slowly start to kind of, in my opinion, uh, chip away from that that pressure of yeah. like sucking the fun out of the experience. Exactly. No, I, I fully agree with you. It's uh, it's always a fun line, and, and like we we can sit there and we always it's a lot easier for us to say it, and then when it's time to implement it, then we we kind of fall back into these habits again. Um, but you know, and like sometimes it, it's good to say it out loud um, because it really hits home a little bit more. Um, and I and I don't think during my time of playing. I, I ever really said it out loud to myself, like, hey, listen, this is the problem. Um, and I kind of allowed it to just continue to manifest into something that didn't need to be as bad as what it ended up being. I'm not, I'm not saying it was bad because um, I think as time evolved, I've ended up getting to the place where I really am the most happiest now where I want to be. Um, but it's a learning experience, you know. And, and it's something that you take into the next chapters of your life and, and hopefully implement. Um, a little bit more positively, if you would say. Yeah. yeah. It seems like for you, it's it's been a big learning experience. I mean, going from where you were with baseball and uh, seeing how when you put that pressure on yourself kind of like dwindled your passion a little bit to where you are now. So it seems like a nice evolution 
um, not only physically with, you know, challenging yourself with other stuff outside of baseball, but also mentally of kind of taking that pressure no, off. It definitely has been. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my story. Um, it's been a fun one. I'm, yeah. I guess from both of us, it's cool to see what you've been doing. Um, I, I'm very stoked to have been a part of this, this episode, um, and this, this um, talk. Um, always good to yeah. find, kind of share and exchange um, stories um, yeah really for sure that. Um, yeah so uh for anyone listening or tuning in where can people find you now with what you're doing with crew runners and crossfit yeah so uh, i mean on instagram uh, we have a, a running account the crew runners account is at crew runners underscore sa they said one in south africa um and then at golf course 51 is my instagram handle and yeah i kind of just give everyone a good um, insight as to what my life's about photography, um, sport, fitness, you name it. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what people will find me. I try and share as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on. Everybody tuning in, I'll leave all of Callan's links below and I'll also put them in the video here so you can check them out. But you're doing amazing things. Uh, Thank you so much again, you know, for, for calling in all the way across, across sure, the ocean. Broadening the horizons, yeah, hey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was really great chatting. And yeah, keep up the great work. I hope that I'm almost certain it will continue to be positive journey for you. It's looking exciting. So yeah, thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Same to well, you. Well,